What's up guys, this is Danny Matrango with Mind Pump TV. Today I'm super excited to share with you some of my favorite tips and tricks that I picked up along the way in my years of training. Stuff that's really helped me and helped my clients see success and progression inside and outside the gym. Let's get into it. I wanna introduce you guys to one of my favorite quad exercises. What it is, is it's a form of squatting, right? It's a goblet squat, but I'm gonna elevate my heels. And why I'm elevating my heels is that's gonna allow my femurs to travel more forward. It's gonna give me artificial ankle mobility, which is gonna allow for a greater amount of knee flexion and extension, work my quads that much more, right? So I'm gonna use a wedge today. If you don't have a wedge, you can use a couple of small plates, maybe two and a half or five pound plates, slide them under your heels. And it's gonna give you the ability to, again, have greater forward travel of the knee, as well as get greater activation out of the quad for a couple of reasons, not just forward knee travel, but also you're probably gonna be able to squat deeper, which will mean you're gonna get greater flexion and extension at the knee, which will mean you'll get greater recruitment of the quad. I like to do this movement towards the end of my workout as a quad finisher or quad burnout. So let me show you how it's done. For setup and execution of this heel elevated squat, what I want you guys to think about is elevating the heel, not necessarily the whole foot, right? If you're using a plate, just the heel should be elevated on the plate. If you're using a wedge like this, or even a cheap yoga wedge that you get on Amazon, I really only want you to elevate the heel. If you get too high up on it, you're gonna be so unstable that you're gonna topple forward. So from this position, heels are elevated, grab a dumbbell, get it into the front rack position, right? In front of your torso like you have a front squat. This is gonna allow you to keep a more vertical torso which could for many people contribute to greater quad activation. From here, I'm sitting down, allowing my knees to travel forward, coming up, right down, up, down, up. You'll notice when I do it, I get a lot of knee flexion and extension. I get deep into that squat. I keep my torso up. That makes my quads really have to work. If I'm doing like a barbell squat or a low bar squat off of a wedge, the bar's further down on my back and I allow a little bit of hip flexion and extension, I'm probably gonna be able to lift more weight for sure, but I'm definitely gonna use more glute, probably use a little more hamstring, some hip stuff. This, I can really isolate my quads as much as possible on a compound movement and it becomes a really great way to hammer one particular tissue. And if you wanna build up your quads, this is a fantastic way to do it, as well as kind of working on some of the better squat patterns and really recruiting some of the right musculature and practicing getting deeper into a squat, which might have some nice mobility carryover for you down the road. So I kind of wanna talk about squatting with your heels elevated or using squat shoes. This has been a really large point of contention in the last couple years for some reason. And quite frankly, I don't really understand it. At the end of the day, as a trainer or as a trainee, I wanna be able to squat. I wanna be able to hinge, lunge, push and pull to the best of my ability, right? And not everybody has incredible ankle mobility. Not everybody's five foot nine and has great ankle mobility, great knees, great hips. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't squat. Right? If you have poor ankle mobility and you need to use a squat shoe or a squat wedge, all that's gonna do is allow you to learn the movement better, perform the movement to the best of your ability at that given time. And you can work on the requisite mobility in your off time or post-workout. And those things will eventually come together. But quite frankly, bashing on things like squat shoes and heel elevation it's just another way to scare people away from training or trying to do something or better themselves in some way. So I'm not really a big fan of bashing any of those things. They're simply tools in a toolbox that somebody can deploy to become a better version of themselves. So at the end of the day, we should all be working on mobility. We should all be using all the tools we can or all the tools we have at our disposal to train as safely and effectively as possible. In my years as a trainer, I've deployed this heel elevated squat in a variety of different places and locations throughout a workout. When I've worked with athletes who are taller, maybe even above 6'5", I'll generally use this type of squat, either a heel elevated goblet squat like we worked on today or any type of heel elevated squat, whether that be a barbell or even a hex bar deadlift. That seems to work well as a squatting variation for taller athletes with longer femurs. 
If you're somebody who's shorter like me and maybe you wanna just build up your quads, this can actually be a standalone quad movement, right? You can do this in place of like a leg extension. You can do this as a 1B exercise, maybe at the beginning of your movement as well if you wanna load it up heavy. And if you're just learning how to squat, or maybe you're a trainer and you're working with a client who doesn't necessarily have the best mechanics for squatting yet. They have a hard time maybe keeping their trunk from collapsing or thinking about sitting down into a squat because they have really bad ankle mobility. This can actually be a great corrective exercise for letting their nervous system feel what a proper depth squat is like while you work on the mobility on the back end of it. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video and found some value in there. If you did, do me a big favor, like, comment, subscribe. We look to that stuff all the time and try to interact with you guys as much as possible, not just to help you with tips and tricks, but also to find directions to take new content. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great day.